Thank you so much and welcome everyone to today's session. I am beyond excited to welcome Daniel Durant, who is from the Oscar-winning movie Coda and has done a whole host of other work as well. Um, as a brief introduction, my name is Keely Catwells and I founded a company called Sea Talent, which is a talent agency that represents high-profile deaf and disabled talent. Uh, we were founded because I became disabled at 17 and I live with invisible disabilities and chronic illness and I didn't see my experience reflected on screen and I also quickly realized that disabled people usually don't have access to option A or option B so I created my own option C, C Talent. Uh, we were recently acquired by leading creator company Whaler and that marked one of the largest investments ever made in disabled talent in the creative industry. So without further ado, Daniel, welcome. I would first of all love to hear from you a bit about your experience and how you came to fame. Oh, wow. I love hearing that I'm famous. I, I don't think so yet. But I was born in Detroit, Michigan. And I was adopted when I was 18 months old. And I was raised in Duluth, Minnesota. It's a small town. And my first time being on stage was when I was nine years old because I went to a mainstream school and I was the only deaf kid in school. I was the only deaf kid in town. And I always had an interpreter with me. And it was weird, it was hard to socialize with kids. I was with a deaf and hard of hearing teacher. So it means, you know, there was one teacher in the whole town that would go around and tutor deaf students to make sure they catch up their education and stuff. And you notice that I loved art. I could draw and I like to be creative with my stories. So, the teacher decided to write a small children's play for me, and he gave me the leading role. And I got on stage, and it was a dream come true. I loved it. This was where I belonged. I loved being a different character, learning how to become a different person, diving into something like that, and telling a story and working with other people as a team. So I found that this was my dream. I love this. And I told my mom that I want to continue acting. And sadly, again, in Duluth, Minnesota, it's a small place. But I finally got to school for the deaf in high school, and I got to do theater in high school. And I didn't really think about becoming an actor seriously until I graduated from high school. Before I went to college, I went to RIT Tech in New York. But at the time, YouTube popped out. So YouTube was going online, and I bought a camera and started telling stories and jokes and long speeches. And that's where I started to grow a fan base on YouTube. And then I went to college, and I struggled in college. I was frustrated. I didn't like my major. I wasn't happy in class. And I was thinking, you know what? I should be an actor. And then one day, it hit. A manager from Los Angeles saw me on YouTube. She contacted me and let me know that she recognized that she has skills, or that she, I think you have skills, and we have a place here for you in Deaf West Theater in LA. I auditioned, and I got the role. And then I've taken off ever since. Thank you. I love that. And the Deaf West Theater is the premier sign language theater in the US. And I'm wondering what do you think governments and, uh, and local communities can do to increase opportunities for deaf and disabled talent um, within, within those organizations and for more deaf disabled people to be able to get into, into those career opportunities? That's a wonderful question. And I mean, big time, yes, there's a lot more stuff we can do. Before Deaf West Theater had a lot of money, they had grants, government grants from art, and then those got cut. So now it's, the times are changing. Things are getting hard again, and people are looking for money to continue Deaf West Theater. That's why it's beautiful that Europe and England and the UK and Norway, there's many Deaf theaters here. You guys are supported by the government, and the arts are important in the UK. So that's incredible. In America, it's the opposite. It's very capitalist and it's, hard time. it's a hard time to get through. I'm trying to do my best and become famous and I wanna find a way to help everyone and all those theaters somehow. I think about it every day. And as we know, the entertainment industry plays a huge role in the way that society perceives and treats deaf and disabled people. What are your thoughts on the role of the entertainment industry and what can the entertainment industry do better to create a better society for us all? Again, you have incredible questions, thank you. I think it's important as a deaf person, especially being part of the CODA movie, has anyone seen CODA? Of course. Awesome, <laughs> all right. So, 
again, if you haven't seen Coda, check it out on Apple TV because it's a nice accessible movie. But it just won an Oscar for Best Picture. And it was the second man to, a second, the first deaf man, but second deaf person to win an Oscar. And that recognition helps us. It helps people understand why it's important to get authentic portrayals of disabled characters. You know, Coda had already started, there, Coda is a remake of a movie from France. So it's a French movie, and they had two deaf people, they had two hearing people act as deaf people. And they signed, but you know, it's almost like they were making fun of our language. It wasn't authentic. It was ugly. And one big company called Lionsgate, they wanted to invest and make Coda, and they hired the first director, Sean Hedder, who wrote the movie. And she had a big argument with production because they wanted to use big hearing name actors. And Sean said no. Sean had already gotten Marley Matlin because she was in Hollywood, and both of them said, no way, hell no. So Lionsgate dropped it, and they went looking for another company. And they found a small independent company to produce a movie with real deaf actors. So myself, Troy, and Marley became successful. And we're so happy that Apple TV bought our movie. And the end result is we showed a beautiful movie, and we touched the world with our beautiful language, and it has dirty signs, and it's so much fun to watch. <laughs> so it's great. It's a great movie. And I have to thank Sean and Marley for making an authentic deaf movie with deaf actors, because we have deaf culture in us already. Our ASL is pure. And you know, you guys haven't been in our shoes, so how can you put a hearing actor there? Just look in general with any disabilities. It doesn't matter what you are. I cannot explain your experience. I'm not in your shoes. So it's important that CODA, they won Best Picture. It just It helps open the door in Hollywood. They understand more that deaf actors and other disabled people have authentic stories to tell, and I'm happy about that. And I think what CODA did so well, too, was highlight that deaf and disabled people aren't disabled because of our medical conditions or our diagnosis, but we're disabled because of the inaccessible society that we live in, whether that be attitudinal, communication, or physical barriers. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are on how can we make the industry more accessible? How can we get them to go beyond compliance and make sure that disabled people and deaf people are included from the conception of a project? So these conversations, they don't have to, you know, projects don't have to stop because there's not authentic representation from the beginning. I think it's important, again, like CODA, it became famous and successful, and it's because they don't tend to hire deaf actors. They just can't picture working with a deaf person on set or any disability. They're like, how are we going to communicate? How are they going to get around? It's ignorance, and it's not their fault. Again, it's ignorance. It's a small population of deaf people in this world compared to people who can hear. So after the CODA movie, it, again, it helps us, they can reach out. Hollywood can reach out to Sean or the producers and say, how was it working with deaf people? And they'll say it's simple, just hire an interpreter. Hire an ASL master or a director of ASL. So you have one person, you have eyes on the screen making sure that the sign language looks good and they're kind of like a script supervisor. And then if I improv, they write it down and they let the director know, he said this. And it worked out so smoothly. And you have an interpreter there on set just like, again, with CODA, we filmed it on a tiny fishing boat. There were 20 people on that little boat, even though it looks like three of us. So the interpreter's on the roof of the boat. The interpreter's hanging off the side of the boat. She's got to crawl under the bed. <laughs> so it all worked out fine. I'll never forget, when CODA started filming, there were like, you know, 300 crew on production. And they're all looking at me. They're all anxious. How do we get through with a deaf person? And after two or three days, it was like they forgot we were deaf. We just got along well. They gestured to me. We filmed. It was easier. They could tell me to move to the side by themselves. And they learned dirty signs. And it was fun. <laughs> it's our visual language. This is our natural language. So it was very cool. So it's important that Hollywood keeps it open. And if they understand that it's easy to work with people, it'll continue. I love that. And what do you think people in this room today and young delegates at One Young World can do to forward the inclusion of deaf and disabled people in the entertainment industry and in society in general? Well, I mean, the people are here. Like I said before, open your hearts, open your minds, just like everyone's asking here. Wherever we're from, whatever our experiences are, we're here now. And how can you support us easily? Watch CODA <laughs> if those numbers go up. That helps. But I have another big project that will be announced soon. I'll be involved. It'll be announced on Good Morning America on Thursday, September 8th. So support me there. And 
Deaf people, when they have opportunities on Netflix, there's going to be a show coming out about Jeffrey Dahmer with three deaf actors in it. Just watch these shows with deaf or disabled people in it, or both, and just support and keep an open mind about that. It just shows Hollywood what people want to see. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time and your work. Um, can you give us any more secrets about the big project? Can we have any first glances into what that's going to be? Well, one big secret was, I'll be, again, I'll be on Good Morning America. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but the rest of that, I can't. I can't wait for you guys to know, really. I hate keeping a secret. And again, the reason why I joined this project, and I want to add that I wanna be, I'm going to be a producer. For the first time, I'm getting pitched as a TV role. I'm a star, and they want me in the writing process. And that's incredible. That's my first time. I've never experienced that. I don't know what it's like to be a producer, but I can't wait for more opportunities like this so I have a chance to put more deaf people on screen. That's incredible. Congratulations. And on that, how can we get more deaf and disabled people in those roles? Because I think right now you have to kind of prove yourself in the industry. And I think there's many inaccessible roles, for instance, like the runner. And for many people, the runner in the industry is a very inaccessible kind of stepping stone to, to get to the next level of the industry. So how can we ensure that there are opportunities for young people and new talent in the industry to get into those positions? I think it's important relating to your agency and how you own this business. When you look for a role, it's not they happen to be deaf or they happen to be blind. If it's any role and someone auditions for it with their disability and they're good at acting, then you know we can, make, we can add that to their character. We can chop that arm off or do whatever we have to do. It's important that you have to sell yourself. Anyone can do any character, so you have to pitch yourself. And I've been trying to do that my whole life. And now it's working because my agency's pitching me and they see my story and they see that Daniel can do it. They saw me on CODA, so yes, you're right, I did have to prove myself. It's a resume. But now I'm getting hearing characters changed into deaf characters. So it's important to show your talent, whatever it is. I don't know how it is, but you've got to get in that door. I agree. And I think we have to normalize disabled people being experts in subjects beyond just disability. Um, so thank you again. Is there anything exactly. that... Exactly. Thank you. Is there anything that you would like to add um, or, or leave us with today? Honestly, thank you for having me here. This is an incredible experience. One Young World is a beautiful thing. It's so brilliant seeing this understanding, and I'm looking forward to seeing the world improve for everybody. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Can we sign applause to Daniel? Thank you, guys. Every time that happens, it touches me. I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. We have a bit more time now for some questions. So if anyone in the audience has questions for Daniel or for Keely, please raise your hand. I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Um, I watched Coda, and I had also watched Sound of Metal before that, which is also a movie about a guy who became deaf. And it actually made me feel a bit stupid because I'd never thought of certain things before I watched it about the disabled community and how they are just, just as able as everybody else. They just communicate in a different way. And it made me think about why do we teach Spanish and French in schools and we don't teach sign language because how are we ever going to communicate with people who obviously exist in our society if we don't speak the language they do and we just expect everyone to know our language. That's beautifully said. Thank you. I applaud that and I agree. And really, ASL can benefit anyone. You know, ASL is not a universal language. You guys know that, right? It's American Sign Language. But here we have BSL, and it's a beautiful, it's your own language. And languages benefit anyone. Again, if you're far away, you wouldn't need that microphone. You could have just sighed to me. So it's, there's benefits there. And if you see a deaf person in a store, you can sign with them. You're right. Signing has tons of benefits. and. I'm trying to encourage the world in America, I mean, I'm trying to encourage schools in America just to get more sign language in classes, but again, deaf people have a small population. You heard about us, and it's rare, but it's because of this. And again, it's not your fault. It's just ignorance. There's a small number of us. But yeah, we need to try and push that language and expose the world that deaf people are here. Hi, um, you said that you were entering a production role. Um, after being an actor for some time, you were now entering a production role. I want to ask you what that power dynamic is and the shift and the impact of shifting from being an actor to being a producer and whether or not you want to see that as something you take forward. That's a great question. You're definitely more powerful as a producer. I'm proud and I'm excited because the team is very open-minded. 
and they welcomed me on their team, and they understand because of Coda probably, and they showed me their script right away. And it's based on a book, and I have a strong perspective as a deaf character, and it's a hearing script. It's a hearing writer about a deaf character. So they want to fix it by hiring me. So they open their minds, and they let me play with the script and explain what a deaf dude would do in this situation and what my real life is like every day. And I've, become, I've added more things to the script. It's become authentic because of me. And that's nice. I felt that power. And lately, as an actor, you can't do that. You're scared to tell the director what to do. But again, with Coda, I was so lucky that Sean was open. And she kind of gave us that power in the first place. She impressed upon us that if you have anything in the script you don't like, tell us. If it's something a deaf person wouldn't do, please tell us. Tell me right there. And my favorite part is when the first time we were shooting at the Rossi home, our little house. But again, we call it the Rossi home. It's a poor house. It's like falling over. And the crew and the directors let all of the deaf actors move the furniture the way we would as a deaf person would in their house. Because deaf people set up their house differently than hearing people. We like to watch TV, but also be able to look at the door. Because if you don't see the door, you can't hear it opening. That's authentic to deaf acting. So again, as a producer, I have power, and I have power to do that, and I'm going to continue to do that. Hi, I really like your work and everything. Um, my question is more of like the intersectionality. So like disability is one thing. So working with your community and everything, do you see representation of people of color? Because even that double intersection, you'd see you know a little difficult, like just harder to find people. So I just want to ask around that. Thanks. Oh, that's big time. That's my next goal, honestly. We're all white. Coda, every deaf actor is white. And white people get it easier in Hollywood, because I think it's other people's turns. There's diverse deaf people out there. They have different stories than I do. So it's their turn. And I'm going to try and use my power to bring them up. But in any art, we got to show what other people's lives are looking like. And I'm excited, because soon, on Netflix coming out again, the Jeffrey Dahmer show, it's called Monster. It's going to have two or three gay black guys, and they're deaf. So that's diversity. And what I love about deaf culture, it doesn't matter who they are. If they're diverse, you're deaf and I'm deaf, we understand each other. So growing up deaf, it's like, it's hard. You can't be racist because you can't choose your color. It's just the language. <laughs> we have to, one last question at the back. I'd love to also call out uh, CJ Jones. He is an actor that we represent and have represented for a couple of years since our inception. He's believed in what we've been doing for, for a long time, and he's going to be in Avatar 2, which is going to come out in December. Um, so that's very exciting. So be on the lookout for, for CJ Jones in Avatar 2. CJ's a great guy. It's so cool that you talked about him and you represent him. That's awesome. Um, hi, my name's Olivia. I'm from South Africa, and I work um, in communications in a refugee uh, facility in South Africa where there are 14 different nationalities. And I met the most amazing deaf man named Omar, and his energy just radiated. And we are looking at doing a short film and documentary about him. Um, we kind of reached a lot of stumbling blocks because it's quite complex, him being a deaf man, um, as well as you know the, the situation within the refugee community. So, I mean, it's a big ask. Um, but it would be amazing to connect and further uh, discuss it because, I mean, I'm personally not a film producer, uh, but a social impact consultant uh, trying to bring the right people together to produce this. And I think it could be really amazing showing the dynamics from um, his eyes in terms of a refugee He's space. like, oh, oh, for sure. Be in contact. I'll come find you right now. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, Daniel. I'm Lydia from Australia. I'm a disabled woman and I'm very much about disability pride. Um, being autistic, people ask me what... Um, they can do in the community to help me feel more included and safe. Um, is there anything that we can do as a community and back in our own homes to help the deaf community feel more inclus included? Maybe really, again, in Australia. I know Australia has a great deaf theater and a great interpreting program. So, I mean, it'd be nice to just bring light to that. Anything with arts or creativeness, Australia is so good with, and there's many brilliant deaf artists there. You can support them. And if, again, it's just any stories from your friends or yourself. Tell your autistic story. Share your life. Get a writer. Get a ghost writer. Maybe find a deaf one. It's just getting people in different jobs. But develop your script. Make your pitch, like a five-minute pitch. And if people like it, they'll make your story grow. But definitely start with a team who believes in you. Start with your friends and speak with them. Thank you so much to our panelists. Can we have one last round of applause for Daniel and Keely?